I did some domesticated stuff today. <laughs> domesticated stuff? Yeah, I had a day off, so I did some cleaning. I mean, I'm not really naturally domesticated, so it took a lot out of me. Okay. <laughs> you keep saying domesticated. I think you mean domestic. Because Whatever. Domesticated, that implies Dan's doing some weird shit there that I don't need to be knowing about. And All I'm going to say is the cat's not the only one that uses a litter box. It gets a little crazy around here. I'm going on record as saying I didn't even say that. That was not me. I am me. getting a stern look from the couch right now. Mir where is Miracle? Miracle took off in a grumpy little fit. She was very happy because I gave her a brushing and brushed all of this off of her. Six pound cat. Fucking two pounds of fur I just Wait, brushed. You know off. what? You save enough of that up, you'll be able to make another cat. That's what I'm saying. And then I stopped brushing her, so she got mad and stormed off in a huff. I, I just, I'm still, st I don't want to get in trouble for that one because I didn't say that shit. I just, I, I think he's bringing, oh, oh, we're be we're, we have kitty delivery coming. We were sitting on the pouting stair. Oh, she the sits on the top stair when she's mad and just pouts. Like she puts herself in timeout and just sits there and pouts until someone comes to get her. You know, last year at Com Bravo, speaking of which, Com Bravo this weekend, I'm going to be there. It's going to be excellent. Hamilton, Ontario. Ah. Oh. Um, last year at Com Bravo, we had a D20 Live where we did a live uh, um, Dungeons & Dragons game for... And we, we got... We encountered a gargoyle. And someone cast the polymorph spell on the gargoyle. Stay with me. This is going somewhere. And they managed to turn it into a kitten. She's like, nope. But the kitten... They turned the gargoyle into a kitten? Yes, but the kitten retained the hit points of a gargoyle, so it was a 500 hit point gargoyle. And we decided to name it Fussy Bridge, Miss Fussy Bridges. And, and, and the earlier in the chat was saying, hey, we should start calling Miracle that, because she is a bit of a Fussy Bridges. You are a bit of a Fussy Bridges. I call her Scarlet O'Hara. She's that dramatic. She's quite melodramatic, yes. Yes, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh no, you. we gotta get <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Right. Okay, let's not kick my top off. Live, <laughs> everybody. The cat's like, yeah. You're gonna put me on the show, huh? You're gonna put me on the fucking show. I'll show you. I'll get you all taken off the air. Fuck you. Oh. You're a little fussy bitches, aren't you? Yes, you are. Say hi, Internet. Hi. They wanted to see you. I don't care. I hate them. Fuck you. Fuck you guys. I was sleeping. That's all that matters to her. Are you going to feed me? Are you going to send me treats? No? Fuck you. Is there food? No, I was sleeping. Leave me the fuck alone. Pretty much. Pretty much. These are her priorities. What a hard life. What a hard fucking life. She's her grumpy little baby. <sighs> well, I hate you. it I is. Hate you so bad. All right. It is that time. Right. And we have. Fussy daddy. We have a variety of things tonight, including one headline that just I'm dumbfounded. We'll get to that one. But I'm. I'm flabbergasted, I'm flummoxed, I am perplexed. We'll, we'll, but we start with some even weirder shit. Hey, it's it's a wonderful night. It's a wonderful night. Let's let's get going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I was talking earlier about the Ashley Madison hack, and that, I swear, yeah. When that comes out, there's going to be really no one hurt for in that one. No, there's there's no there's there's no good guy. But w when it's that a story without hero right there, when that list gets leaked, guarantee goddamn to you, there's going to be a politician on that list, and not, because politicians, oh, yeah. Yeah. politicians are amazingly some of the dumbest people 
And if you don't, mm. if you don't believe me, our first story, some of the dumbest people. This one comes from Maryland. I mean, Donald Trump is leading in the polls, for I fuck's know. sake. Maryland Democratic lawmaker charged with indecent exposure in connection with dispute with ex-husband. Now that starts a little tame. All right, by our standards, that starts a little tame, I, I guess. But don't worry. Okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> Fuck's sake, cat upstage in my shit. It starts a little tame by our standards, but oh, it gets going. A Maryland state lawmaker was recently charged with trespassing and indecent exposure for allegedly burying her breasts during a dispute with her ex-husband at his home. Now you're thinking, wait a minute. Wait a minute, was she just breastfeeding or something? No! Oh, we'll get there. The charges were filed against Delegate Ariana B. Kelly, a Montgomery, uh, Montgomery County Democrat in late June. The 38-year-old lawmaker was divorced in November from her husband, uh, Barack Sanford, and purportedly became upset when Sanford's fiance was inside his suburban Washington house when she arrived June 27th to drop off their two children. Sanford told police that when he asked Kelly to leave, after she started ringing the doorbell and banging on the door, he purportedly gave them a cell phone video of Kelly repeatedly ringing the doorbell, exposing her breasts, and then, with one in each hand, shaking them up and down. Kind of like Fat Ben Stiller does at the end of Dodgeball? Yes! My milkshake. She my milkshake dip. And we you have our, we have our title. My I'm milkshake sure. brings all the cops to the Started yard, right there. She's got her kids with her, and not all right. Not only is she already start starting having issues with their father right in fucking front of them, out come the jubblies. and it's. To, to, Okay, Bomber in the channel said, During the divorce, the ex did say he wanted the motorboat. No! That's not how that... Probably not what he meant. But how did... How does your anger translate to this? <laughs> I've, been, I've been through a divorce. I am this woman's age. I'm 38 years old. At no time during my divorce did I think, You know what would really show this motherfucker? <laughs> If I just show up at his door and start jiggling my tits around. At no point did that seem like a good idea to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, and you know, by itself, this would possibly be enough to be on the show, but we're combining it with the fact that this, this is someone who was elected to office. Yeah. We've got this, people voted for her. That, that this is a you know I would think as a politician maybe this is why <laughs> I mean maybe while she was out pounding the pavement for votes <laughs> they jiggling baby go ahead baby they jiggling baby I I I just this is somewhat you would think a politician the first thing they would think is I should probably not be nude right now. This is... Politicians, they, they have... I don't a, know if I'm down with politicians being never nudes. Well, no, but, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this an advantageous situation for me to... What? <laughs> is this a good place to be nude? Yeah, is this... Is this, th is this a good time to be naked? I mean, I don't think just politicians should ask themselves that. I think that's something every grown person should ask themselves yeah. before getting nude. Is yeah. this a good place for me to be nude? And people are, do you have the video? No, I don't have the video. We wouldn't show it to you anyway. Pornhub is right down the internet. I know, right? It's like, whoa, someone was naked. Someone was naked and I'm not seeing it? There's, it's the internet. If you Google tits, they're there. They're not hard to find. Fuck's sake, people. You're making me sad. You just, you just. Ugh. I just, I, I'm stuck on how this was supposed to. I'm, I'm stuck on what this was supposed to accomplish. 
I really hope this is... Like, was she trying to scare his new fiancé away? <laughs> with her tits? Is that, like, some kind of... I'm thinking of like the part in Mean Girls while they all turn into a am all the kids turn into animals from the African jungle jungle. Like was this some kind of like female mating dominance thing? I don't know. I don't know how tits play into this. I it's, it's it okay, well unique in the channels. I'm thinking of arrested development. You better say goodbye to these! She's always no. Maybe. Well, he's like, I have said goodbye to those. Yeah. That's why I'm in here, and you're outside, jiggling them. And, I mean, contrary to what the media would tell us, tits do not, in fact, always get you what you want. No. It's sad but true, ladies. That is not, in fact, the answer to all. I, I, would, I would really hate to see if this, this occurred in a legislative session. You know... Yeah, you kind of wonder what really heated debates on that. Yeah, no. Like. No. Uh, well, so we had 4th of July not long ago, which drove me fucking crazy because the fireworks just did not stop. They yeah. kept fucking going. And I'm not going to be so crass as to compare. People got really mad at me for saying I don't understand why they sell fireworks, because apparently that means I support, like an uber liberal communist nanny state or something and thanks Obama. I just don't think we should sell explosives to people for fun. I mean, <sighs> sure, maybe I'm a fucking tree hugger for that, but I don't think your average asshole should be entrusted with deadly explosives, but that's just me. <sighs> the fuck do I know? <sighs> I. Yeah, I'm not going to be so crass to say, as to compare my experience to, like, a war zone or anything because, well, it wasn't. But, god damn, it was annoying to have fucking explosions going off. So, I, un all right, to start with, I kind of get where this next guy was coming from. However, that's where my, I'm like, it's, it, all right, it, here we go. I hate the fireworks. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm right there with you. I'm going to go shoot at people over it. Nope. You lost me. I'm done. We already trust them with cars, which are multi-ton steel death machines. Bullshit. Because we require licensing and testing and insurance. They ask you to do any of that to buy a fucking M80? No, they do not. Sorry. As you were. Man upset over neighborhood fireworks fires gun at ground. Man upset about a group of people setting off fireworks in his neighborhood... A week after the 4th of July, pointed a gun at the group and then fired a shot into the ground. Witnesses say Robert Montgomery, 68, this was literally get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. <laughs> confronted a group and look at how mad. He look might. at this fella. Look at him. He is mad. Uh, off, uh, witnesses say confronted a group of people lighting fireworks. Police said he was angry because the noise was upsetting his dogs. So you make a louder noise? You have not helped your dogs. No, it's like the dogs were like, well, it was bad, but that one's worse. Yeah. When the group refused to stop lighting the fireworks, police said Montgomery went to his home and came back out with a handgun. When it said Montgomery pointed his gun towards several people, that's assault. But no one specifically, and then fired one round into his lawn before going back inside. Police said he was arrested without incident. <laughs> look at that face. Just look at that face. Oh my god. One, you have not helped your dogs. No. Two, You've kind of made an ass of yourself because you rolled up there all Clint fucking Eastwood and then you just kind of stamped your feet and went back inside. Not that you should have shot anybody. No, that wouldn't have helped either. The fucking gun was the wrong answer to the situation all around. Yeah, this this is not it's it's like that old saying when you only have a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Get a screwdriver. Well, and that's the problem. He, here in America, 
guns are the answer to every fucking thing. They're not a remote control for life. We've said this before. I have to keep, this is one of those I have to keep saying. It's not a remote control. Once every couple of months, my cousin, one of my cousins in Ireland will IM me and just be like, but seriously, what is it with you people and the guns? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I fucking live here and I don't know what's wrong with us. And he's like, because, like, oh, the cops don't even fucking carry guns in, like, England and, nope. our, like, it's not a thing anywhere else. They, it's just us. They can get guns, but they have to, like, sign that shit out and get permission before they're allowed to bring out the guns. Yeah. Over here, it's like... Like, people are starting to boycott Starbucks because the CEO he said he would prefer people not open carry in Starbucks stores. Not that you can't. But, you know, we'd kind of prefer it if you didn't. Like, you're just coming in to get a fucking latte. You're probably not going to get faced with ISIS. Like, just leave in a car. You never know. Sometimes maybe, you, maybe Starbucks, maybe ISIS wants you know, a latte. You don't know. They could. Yeah, but then blowing up the Starbucks would be counterproductive. It would. It kind of would. Oh, speaking of counterproductive, um, what would you say is one of the most important aspects of a successful robbery? A getaway car. Okay, we're close. The, the, the getaway. Yeah, an escape plan, exit in, strategy. In which case, you, you know, they don't know you. You're gone. You, you, yeah. No traces. So you probably shouldn't write your robbery note on your resume. British Columbia woman jailed for trying to rob store with resume. Per the bank robber who passed a hold-up note written on the back of his check. Now, a British Columbia woman has earned a spot in the stupid crimes file. She wrote a note demanding, quote, give, all, give me all the money before, spelled B and four, not, she couldn't afford the other letters. She couldn't. Before I shoot everyone on the back of her resume, which included her name and address, making it police for easy, make it easy for police to find her after she fled the scene. Would be robber Tara Miller, 28, has entered a Port Alberni smoothie shop. You don't deserve my name. <laughs> You need to change your name immediately. You're too stupid to use it. It's like Mike, Michael Bolton in office chain. Yes. In, in office space. Why should I have to change? She's He's the one who sucks. Than me, so I had it first. So fucking change it. Um, Miller was armed with a plastic toy gun, which the cashier scoffed at, pointing out it was impossible to shoot people with a plastic toy pe uh, pistol. I'll put a Nerf dart right in your fucking eye, bitch. Right in your eye. The owner of the smoothie shop, the cashier's mother, emerged from the kitchen and confronted the would-be robber after a brief physical altercation ensued. Miller fled the, fled the scene, taking the gun and the note with her. She discarded the note in a trash bin in a nearby park, which police later found. It was handwritten on the reverse side of a typewritten resume, which included Miller's... Home. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of efficient. Like, give me all your money, or conversely... Do you have any openings? <laughs> well, you know what? Clearly, I could use the cash. So, I mean, I could start immediately. <laughs> I, and if not, give me all the fucking money in the register. <laughs> you know, considering how effective it is to actually take your resume into a store these days, this is probably a better use for it. Yeah. They ever, they ever go to apply for a job, they're like, oh, you need to apply online. I don't understand why, like, I've done a lot of job hunting in the past couple years. And what, what baffles me is companies that ask for your resume, but then you still have to fill out their 16-page online application. Like, why? Like, what? You're, you asked for my resume, which has all that information on it. Why am I fucking typing it again? Because it's it's like... It, it's it's seriously about like the standardized testing of the grown up world. It's a bane. <sighs> yeah, it, it's annoying and it wastes my time and I don't like it. But seriously, writing the note on the back of your 
Yeah, maybe. Didn't we have someone before who used like the back of their pay stub? Yep. Maybe things that don't have your name and contact information and, on them. You know, it's, it's just it. You don't really get the whole crime thing, do you? You're talking about how I do a good man voice. Did I do a man voice at some point today? I don't know. I don't do I have a man voice? No. I don't remember. <laughs> They're saying I do a good man voice. I don't recall doing a man voice recently. I don't know. I just, whatever. I don't know. Um, you just personally you like it when I do my man voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it might have been a little too much information. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. All right, this is the headline I was talking about when the show started. And this is... We have had many things... Put in many oh, of get off my lawn. I guess I did a man voice. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you today. I'm going to stop that. We, we have had many things put in many a vagina on this show. Yeah. But this is honestly, I swear to God, the most perplexing story. Because this whole new ballgame, so many questions... I don't even know where to begin. Maybe you guys at home can help me because I'm gonna just I'm gonna just leave that right there for a second. What? This is a first on the show. A Devon man has been charged with attempting to rob money from a woman's private parts. This is the first time anyone has ever attempted to rob a vagina. How did he know it was there? Exactly. Now, this this story is so brief. It says, uh, Paul, more detail. Uh, Paul Clint Wells, 38, appeared in court over the alleged bizarre incident, charged uh, with criminal attempt for the offense of attempting to rob a woman of money of an unknown value from her vagina... Um, and that's it. First of all, as someone who works in the service industry, fuck you for keeping money in your vagina. I know, God. Oh. What are you going to do with that? Who are you going to pay with it? Nobody wants that now. No, no, no. You could have a fucking world-class vagina. You could clean it with a fucking fire hose twice a week because you do porn. I don't fucking care. Nobody wants that money now. You say that, the first thing I think of, and you haven't seen the movie, is Weird Al, UHF. Who I wants know. a drink from the fire? What? I do know that bit. Oh, good. Yes. Who wants the drink from the fire? Nobody wants that money now. I, I, but. Except apparently this fucking guy. This, and that's, that is, but this is all the detail we get. Yeah. How did he know it was there? What was his method of trying to steal it? Empty out the vagina! Like, were they on a date and things got a little heated and then all of a sudden he was like, hey, spare change. I, 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 I was just, what happened? This is baffling to me. I, and I am. Was she just walking along shedding coins? <laughs> Ooh, found a penny. Ooh, found a penny. <laughs> Who found a pick? I, and, oh, all right, May in the channel pointed out, money is gross already. Why would you put it in there? Yeah. This is like compounding issues. What always amazes me, I, you know, I've worked a few food service jobs, and they're very specific about, like, if you touch the sanitizer, you can't touch any food. You have to put on gloves before you do this. But they're all cool with you running the register. And I'm like, do you understand how fucking disgusting money is? Like, the people touching your money should not be the people touching your food for any reason. But every place is cool with that. They're like, if you scratch your nose, wash your hands. But no, take all that fucking cocaine pussy money. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if... And then make them their sandwich. I, I don't even carry cash anymore. I, I use... Everything's a card for me now. Yeah. And that's wonderful because you don't even have to touch their card. They can swipe it themselves and push, and you don't have to have any contact, and it's gorgeous. 
But this, again, something needs to be, what happened? The channel reads is a good point. Maybe they were like holy coins because her vagina was haunted. Samantha Brown, you have to get out of here. Your vagina is loaded. Maybe there was a vaginal exorcism taking place at the time and this guy fucked it up. I, this, this sounds like, you know, something that you'd get on like a raunchy version of whose line anyway. Whose line is it anyway? Yeah. It's like, all right, give me, give me a place. A vagina! Give me an action. A robbery! Go! I, I have so many questions. How did he know it was there? What was his attempted method of theft? This shit is... This is not just you and me. This is going to keep people up at night. People who watch this show are going to be sitting there, lying awake, three in the morning, going, well, did she know him? Did he, did she tell him that she had money in the, what, did, what was there a gun or did he just you know was she like damn my pussy's worth like a billion dollars and he took it literally yeah you know it's it so I, I seriously mean, if you put like fuck you for putting money up there don't don't put money in there because somebody making minimum wage has to take that money from you and get. Oh, God, God, I hope you have no STDs. You know what? That actually carries over to our next story. Oh, God, there's more. Oh, God, there's more. We have had all of these these stories of people breaking into people's houses, not to steal stuff, but just just hang out and make a fucking omelet. What? Wow, that's going to come out as a weird ass euphemism here. Oh, boy. Sex toy left behind leads to burglary suspect's arrest. <sighs> Wichita Falls, Texas. And look at this fella. Look at this. He you know what he looks like? He looks like Meatloaf in Fight Club. His name was Robert Paulson. His name was Robert Paulson. And actually, his name is James Russell Sims. So... There's that. I, I, I'm sorry. Wichita Falls, a sex toy on display and cigarette butts on tables led to the arrest of an Iowa park man. Uh, police say the burglary happened back in March when two women told authorities what they saw inside the home when they returned from a trip out of town. Women told police there were discarded cigarette butts, food that had been eat, prepared and eaten, and a quilt laid out on a bed with an open bottle of lotion and a sex toy. According to the arrest affidavit, the woman claimed none of the items belonged to them or had been used by them. Why the fuck were the police asking, all right, are you sure this wasn't yours? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Police say DNA samples. I don't remember buying the Donald Trump butt plug, but I've been drunk a lot lately. Authorities say DNA samples taken from the crime scene date, uh, matched DNA belonging to 40-year-old James Russell Sims. Why would you not take all that shit with you? Why would you bring it with you to another house and just set up shop and jerk? I, now, here's another thing that the story doesn't, doesn't explain. Are we talking a fleshlight or yeah, a dildo? Are we talking here? Do you think those are the only two sex toys on the market? Do you think those are the only options? You need to get out more. I mean, for all we know, it could have been that My Little Pony blow up sex doll. Or one of those disembodied ass things. There, there's a whole world of things that it could have been. It could have been one of those dildos on a pogo stick. Mm. Oh, hey, where are you going? <laughs> I guess I'm in charge now. I'm just saying, Fleshlight or Dildo is, is really, really paring down the options. 
Hi. Come on back. I, I can't actually run the show. I can't press the button. So I'm going to just sit there with Robert Paulson's face naming sex toys until you come back. That's all I can do. Hi. So we don't know if it was a dildo <laughs> or a flashlight. I want to know, was it their lotion? <laughs> yep. And guys, why do you do this? Why do you use lotion as lube? That's not good lube. No, it's not designed for that purpose. There's a guy I dated for a very short time, and the first time I went over his place straight up on the nightstand, he had a box of tissues and a big old thing of, of like, body lotion. And I'm like, really? You couldn't toss that in a drawer? This no is like, shit! This is like our third date. You just leave that out? <laughs> Like, on one hand, I, I admire your honesty. On the other hand, it's a little tacky. Well, maybe maybe the subtext was, look, I'm not, I know I'm not I guaranteed. Expectations. I'm yeah. prepared in case you just go home. It's cool either way, just so you know. But I was just like, don't bring a lot of girls home, do you? Oh, my. Get away. I put my fucking Chris Evans real doll away once Dan comes home. It's just polite. Uh. Yeah, I, I don't really understand what happened here. I mean, he had his own home, apparently. Nope, I'm going to go over to some complete strangers, smoke a whole bunch. I mean, here's my best guess is... He had seen these girls somewhere or had been watching these girls and oh. got off on doing his business in their home. And that was the whole point. And it got creepier. That's my guess. And it got as if this was, I mean, dear God almighty. Imagine having to go down to the police station when they say we have the man in custody and you see this looking back at you. Yeah. You're, the first thing you're doing when you're going home is just taking out a can of gas and a box of matches and be like, well, I'm done. That's it. We got to move. <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. I mean, you come home and there's a sex toy that doesn't belong to you and lotion and a quilt that doesn't belong to you on your bed. Yeah, I'm, I'm setting fire to that bed immediately. <sighs> it's the only way to be sure. Well, our last story tonight is, this is easily, one more, yeah, this is easily worst person in the world territory. I saved this one for last because many things wrong here. All of it is, 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 okay, you know what, we, we, we need, I'm going to have to have this queued up because we're going to need it. Um, let, let, let's, let's just bring this one up. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for this one. And of course, oh, you touch my -la -la. fucking teenagers, man. This had to happen. Oh, you touch my tra la la. Anyway, man accused of toppling girls' lemonade stand and fleeing. With $30, an 18-year-old Riverside man was arrested on suspicion of overturning two teenage girls' lemonade stand and then absconding with their pink and turquoise money box. Santini Tate walked up to the stand Wednesday and asked the two 13-year-olds for some lemonade. This, this, it just keeps getting worse. It keeps getting worse. Even though he did not have cash, the girls gave Tate some lemonade, and he walked away. Tate what a dick. Tate returned a moment later, toppled the lemonade stand before snatching the box, box which contained 30 bucks. Brother, one of the girls chased Tate, confronted him to no avail. 
He was able to retrieve the empty money box, but 10 minutes later, sheriff's deputies responded to the area, found Tate, and arrested him on suspicion of strong arm robbery. You're going to jail for robbing little girls for $30. $30. And, like, let's picture your first day in the yard. <laughs> what are you in for, Grand Theft Auto? What are you in for, aggravated assault? What about you? I robbed a lemonade stand, stole some money from some kids. Guess who's getting his shit beat in? Yes. Even Guess who's getting fucked up? You know, even in jail, they got standards. Yeah. I say, and they hear that shit. Well, no, like my mom used to work in the county jail and like child molesters do not do well in jail. Yeah. Rapists do not do well in jail. Like bad things happen to people that fuck with kids in jail. Yeah. Bad things. And third, they just, they gave you free lemonade, you dick. No. Like, granted, he's probably not going to serve a terribly long sentence. He will probably not make it to, like, a state prison or something like that, because this is a pretty minor, it, you know. But no, you have, the, the worst thing is, he's got a record now. So if he yeah. goes in to apply for a job, he, <laughs> have, were you convicted of a crime? If so, what did you do? He's got to put that shit down on his I resume. I money from two little girls. You're that guy. You're that fucking asshole. That shit was going to follow you. That is, this is like the grown-up permanent record. That shit's going to follow you for fucking ever. Yeah. How do you go home and tell your mom this? Like... I would, if it were me, I would not go home. I remember my mom. I would not go home. Like, when they call your mom from jail to tell her that you stole lemonade money from a couple little girls who gave you free lemonade, you think she's going to be proud? I had a southern mom, and I, I just, I, 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 the first thing I know coming, oh, honey, why'd you do that? And just that, I, we, we, I know we raised y'all better than that. <laughs> I know we did. I I just I don't know. I just don't like know. how fucking tough do you think? Like, how do you look at yourself in the mirror and be like, "Yeah, I fucked up those little girls in their lemonade stand, bro." And this shit, all all this, he's going to have to contend with for the rest of his life. For yeah, because he's 30. eighteen. Like, this isn't juvenile shit. Nope. This is going on an adult. For the rest of his life, for thirty dollars, was it worth that? Was it really worth the thirty bucks? It's just such a dick move, man. Here, Thank Mister, you. have some lemonade. Okay, wham! No, it's, and he had to kick. He had to knock the stand over too. Conversely, how much did that lemonade have to suck? <laughs> No, no. Maybe that was just some really shitty lemonade. No, the only one who's justified behaving like that over something food being shitty is like Gordon Ramsay. Nobody else is justified. I wouldn't even say him. <laughs> and you know he doesn't act like that on his UK shows. That's it's just totally for us. Expectation for his American shows. On his shows in the UK, he's not like that at all. I did not. Know that, that is a persona adopted for the American audience because we're fucking morons. I guess, I guess the first thing we've learned tonight is be what, committing a crime, you got to think real careful about that shit because that's forever. Ask yourself if it's worth it. Ask yourself if it's worth it. We learned. Ask yourself when you're faced with a six foot seven, three foot wide dude in the yard. Are you going to feel proud telling him why you're there? Yeah. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. The, even he's even the guy is gonna be like, damn, what's wrong with you, boy? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? We learn that everybody needs to send Nash links to their favorite sex toys because he needs some education. So get on that Twitter. You're welcome. I should teach sex ed to kids. I'd be really good at it. What did I do? 
What the fuck did I do? Like Jimmy McNulty and fucking The Wire. What did I, what the fuck did I do? We've learned that even lawmakers are, can end up on this fucking show. Yeah. So just because somebody gets elected to office doesn't mean they're a really smart person. They'll still take their junk out and shake it at you. We've learned that guns, not a fix. Guns are not duct tape. You can't fix everything with them. No. <clears throat> guns are not the answer to all of life's problems. We've learned that in the process of committing a crime, a crucial element is to remain unconnected to what you've done. Yeah. Your resume kind of defeats purpose. Someone just PM'd me that I could probably get a Patreon for a YouTube channel of me doing comprehensive sex ed. Meh. Well, thank you. We've learned that if you come home and you find a quilt with a sex toy on it that ain't yours on your bed, burn the fuck it, burn that shit. Burn the house down. Fire cleanses. Fire, yeah. it purifies. It's And the last thing we learned tonight, every single person who watched this is going to be awake in the middle of the night, just sitting there trying to figure out the rest of that fucking vagina robbery story. Yeah, that was some shoddy reporting. We needed more information. We need, we need Geraldo Rivera on that shit. And even worse, when you, my audience, try to explain to anyone else what you're trying to figure out, everyone's going to look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, they're going to be like, what? Vagina robbery? What? 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 Are you feeling okay? Do you need to sit down? I don't think Agatha, Agatha Christie covered that one. 